All right. So if you remember looking at Piaget's um, theory of cognitive development, right? We said that's how we learn how to think. Uh, and so those thinking processes can then leak over into our social interaction. So we're going to look at um, some of the processes uh, that uh, we use to guide our thinking in social situations. Um, so social cognition is thinking about social activities. Uh, and so a lot of times what that'll do uh, is it can lead to uh, predictions uh, about what's going to happen. So if I'm saying, okay, well, I'm going to go on this first date, right? Well, I'm going to think about other first dates I've gone on or first dates I've seen in movies or things that other people have said. And I'm going to try and get an idea in my head about how this is going to go. Your brain's lazy, right? Um, it doesn't want to have to work very hard. And so if it can get an idea uh, in its head about how something's going to go, that makes dealing with the situation easier. It can make it harder when it doesn't go the way that, uh, that you think it's going to go. But that's what we do, right? We try to figure out, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do in this situation. And then we try and predict that with others. The problem is we can have trouble predicting the situation or how other people are going to react. Maybe somebody's going to do something that really surprises us. Um, but because we're driving the action in a certain way, um, they don't get the opportunity to do that. Uh, these are called cognitive heuristics. Uh, and basically in our brain, these are rules of thumb. This is just kind of the idea, okay, this is what happens. Uh, and so this is the assumption uh, that I'm going to make. And again, these are just mental shortcuts um, that are trying to help us uh, figure out the world, right? Um, we have what are called associational learning, uh, which is basically uh, kind of like operant conditioning, right? I did this before, uh, and then this negative or positive thing happened. Uh, and so that's, that's what I've learned. So uh, I've learned when I go into a situation and I am funny uh, in those initial interactions, then people seem to like me more, right? And so then the person who has decided that might go into uh, one of those uh, situations trying to do that. Problem is, um, you go and you're trying to be funny in a situation where that's not called for or your particular brand of humor isn't welcome, that could be a little difficult for you. Uh, observational learning. You're looking at uh, how other people uh, have dealt with the situation, right? Um, been watching this, uh, this series with uh, Michael Jordan uh, on his playing career, and, and there was just an episode I watched that had Kobe Bryant in it. And he said Michael Jordan kind of pulled him aside uh, and, and talked with him, mentored him behind the scenes, uh, trying to help him navigate this really difficult situation that he was going to be uh, going through. So, so you're looking at what other people are doing. You're leaning on their advice. Um, and so what we do is we create schemas for things, right? These are just basically our idea of what is going to happen uh, in this particular uh, situation. Uh, and really two things can happen with schemas. If something doesn't go uh, the way we think it should go, uh, we either uh, kind of explain that away in our minds. It's a process called accommodation. Uh, or we change that schema uh, altogether. Or you know, we, uh, we assimilate in that information uh, and we make a change uh, to our own mental process. Much easier to, for our brains anyway to accommodate, right? to kind of make excuses than to assimilate. Uh, but a lot of times it can be handier uh, to assimilate uh, that information and make changes. Uh, one of them is confirmation bias, right? And this is the tendency people have um, to believe information that supports what they already think. Um, now, in an era of fake news and the Internet and weird YouTube videos, it is super easy uh, to find information like this, right? Well, I have, uh, you know, I believe this particular thing, uh, and so I'm going to just watch this news site, or I'm just going to read articles from this person because I know they're going to put things in a way that don't make me mentally uncomfortable. Uh, and the danger in that is um, if you're just being backed up, but there's no 
uh, real factual basis for it, that kind of stuff, then it could be, um, then, then that could be dangerous, right? You're just reading things that are confirming what, uh, what you want. And that information may not be true, right? Kyrie Irving took a lot of guff, uh, a couple of years ago for joking around that the world was flat, right? Well, if you believe the world's flat, you can go out and find all kinds of sources of information of people who will tell you, uh, Hey, this is how we can scientifically prove that doesn't mean those things are true right uh but if that's all the information you're taking in then then you're going to uh be more likely to uh, to fall for something like that self-fulfilling prophecy we've seen this a couple of different times uh as we've talked about this social situation uh is we expect uh something to happen uh or a person to act in a certain way uh and so our behaviors interact with that right if i go in and i say golly i'm just terrible at math uh, i always do poorly in my math classes um then as we go in that negative behavior can have um can have a negative effect on us right uh there's a there's a part of this called the pygmalion effect i've got the the graphic for you there uh that just basically says you know um our actions interpret the way or impact the way others think about us um, it interprets their actions towards us, and then that changes our beliefs uh, towards ourselves. And so uh, basically it is if you think something is going to happen, psychologically you can make um, that sort of thing happen. It could be about yourself. It could be about other people. Uh, but self-fulfilling prophecy is one of those things that's very hard to short-circuit, but a lot of times it can be very important uh, to try and find a way to short-circuit that. Um, here's another uh, kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, so um, this guy, Jerry, right? He meets a girl named Bianca, right? Who's Italian uh, and, and they flirt, right? They're having, um, they're having this flirty interaction. Uh, so Bianca looks at Jerry and is like, hey, this guy's flirty with me. I'll flirt back, right? And so she flirts back, but then Jerry jumps to a different conclusion, right? He says, okay, well, this girl flirts with me. She's Italian. That must mean all Italians are flirty, right? Uh, and so when he goes uh, into an interaction with another Italian, right, he's expecting that to happen. Uh, and so uh, maybe maybe he's a little more forward, maybe he's a little more flirty because he's, he's expecting the give and take, and so he gets that response. Or he meets an Italian who's not a very flirty person, and then that expectation uh, is short-circuited. So uh, self-fulfilling prophecy can be a powerful one. Uh, salience, right? Salience is the, the tendency we have in our brain has to pick out or concentrate on the shiny new thing, right? This is like Doug from Up with Squirrel, right? Squirrel, right? You're, you're just looking at it. But whatever stands out uh, is, what is um, what is going to um, hit in our minds, right? Uh, it's unusual or colorful. Those are the things our brain is trained to notice, right? Again, our brain's lazy. The stuff we see every day, we don't really pay a whole lot of attention to. Uh, it's the stuff that's that's out of the ordinary uh, that, uh, that we end up paying attention to. Uh, representativeness. All right, we make judgments about situations or people based on our expectations, right? So I got a, a picture here for you. Say you're on a jury, right? Uh, and you see a guy come in in the orange jumpsuit, covered in tattoos, needs a shave, right? Uh, and the prosecutor tells you this man is accused of theft, right, or crime. Well, you look and say, well, yeah, right? People that look that way just look shady, right? And so you're more likely to believe that he's going to have done that crime than a defendant walked in uh, in um you know, in a business, you know, business suit, suit and tie, uh, you couldn't see any tattoos, things like that, really clean cut. We have a tendency to say, well, no, that doesn't look like the kind of person who would do that, right? We try to judge based on our expectations instead of what is or isn't reality. Uh, false consensus bias uh, is our tendency to believe that everybody, or at least our friends uh, or people that are like us, think the same way we do, right? Uh, you can have um, have those conversations. I, I had an example of this uh, just last week. I have a group text message I'm on with my friends from high school, uh, and one of the fellows made a uh, just a post about something that was going on during the day politically, 
Um, and, and basically four of us uh, kind of fell in a certain camp on, on this issue. And, and then one guy was like, what are you guys talking about? That's, that's not what I think at all. And, and I think we all had a tendency to think, well, yeah, we're, you know, we've been friends for 25 years, right? We all think the same way. Uh, you know, we, we believe this about issues or candidates, things like that. Uh, and then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, no, right? That's, that's not, we had a false consensus bias um, thinking that we were all going to think the same just because we, we kind of naturally assume people think the same way we do. Uh, this can happen, too, in trying to interpret other people's behaviors. Um, you know, if you've got somebody who um, asks a lot of questions, right, uh, we don't tend to think that person may just be curious. We think, well, if you're questioning me, then that means you don't agree or you're attacking me. And that's not the way it's happening at all. It's, uh, you know, maybe that person is just somebody who likes to ask questions to understand um, you know, to understand how things are going or, or, or what, what's going on with things. And so you got to be careful with false consensus bias too. Uh, counterfactual thinking, uh, the idea that we replay uh, situations in our brain and we kind of look at those little uh, kind of microscopic things we could have done differently uh, to, make, uh, to make things come out different, right? And I'm sure we've all done this, right? You replay something over and over in your head and you think, well, man, if I had just done this, right, this would have turned out uh, the way that, that I wanted to. But what you're doing is you're looking and saying, well, these, these are the facts, right? This is, um, you know, this is just the way that was. Uh, and so, yeah, it's not, um, you know, maybe it's not something that was, was able to be controlled by my actions. Uh, there was an interesting study done that said that people that won uh, bronze medals uh, in the Olympics were happier than people who won silver medals. Now, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Because you're looking and saying, well, if I'm going to win a medal and I know it's not going to be gold, I'd, I'd rather have silver, right? I'd rather be in second place. And they said, no, the people in silver could always kind of point and say, oh, man, if I had done just this differently, right? If I would got out of the blocks quicker, if I would just uh, torqued a little bit harder, right? I, I would have been in first place, right? People with bronze medals, they found out, though, are happy as clams because they looked and said, well, man, I was just this far from not getting a medal at all. Uh, and so they're more grateful uh, to have gotten any medal, whereas that silver medalist is kind of looking at the gold medalist and saying, mm, wow, I, you know, I was really close to getting this. Um, uh, another one of these is the idea of overconfidence. Uh, we have more faith in our abilities or the abilities of people that we're close to than they may actually warrant. Uh, and so we think uh, that, um, you know, we're, we're the experts at something. We're the best to be able to handle something when in reality that may not be the case. Uh, so as you click back through those, one of the questions you're going to answer is you got to give me an example of a time in your life where one of these things um, affected you. So, so zip back through those again. Check out uh, these different kind of heuristics uh, that we're using that can sometimes put us in uh, awkward situations or put us in a position where uh, maybe we're not um, right uh, about the way we feel about something in particular.